Okay, welcome back everybody. We're now going to take a look at the second major contribution to the van der Waals force, the Debye interaction. So the picture we have for this is you have someplace over here a neutral atom that's polarizable though. It has an atomic polarizability alpha zero. And the thing doing the polarizing is going to be this dipole. So similar to before we can give it a magnitude P and define an angle theta which is its angle relative to the line that would connect the two objects. And to do this, we're going to want to find what is the electric field given off by this dipole, and then what corresponding dipole could it sort of induce in the second object. So combining a couple results, the electric field given off by a dipole, we know from some of our earlier videos combining the Legendre polynomials and such is going to be the magnitude of that dipole times 1 plus 3 cosine squared theta to the 1 half divided by our favorite constants r to the third. So this is I believe the second Legendre polynomial the magnitude the r to the cube ends up working out. And an important result from before was that the total energy, the interaction energy from a dipole on a polarizable object, which in our recent language is w, r, and theta, is just simply minus one half alpha zero times the magnitude of the electric field, which I'll say something like that, squared. That's all we need to do. So if we square our equation for the interaction energy, what do we get? We get minus P squared alpha zero one plus three cosine squared theta. That took care of the one half or the square root that we had. Then we get a two from the one half. We get our favorite constant squared. Now r to the six. That's a nice result. But as before, we want to say that that dipole is free to rotate over different orientations. So what we're actually after is w of only r which is the angle average of this previous dude. Now as we may remember, the uh, average of the cosine squared is one third. So that's effectively just going to kill that three that we have there. And we have our final result is simply p squared alpha zero. This all just averages out to give us a two. We'll get one plus a one. That'll cancel with that two. Constant squared and r to the six. So in some sense that is the total Debye energy. Fix my box a little bit. p squared times alpha zero. But we can make this a little bit more general and say maybe alpha zero is not the same for both of the molecules. In this effect there's some mutual induction going on, in which case the dipole of the first one, which is permanent, will induce a dipole on the second one, which can in turn affect the dipole of the original molecule. So we can make this a little bit more general. So this is our previous result, but imagine if we return to our picture and say our dipole molecule, now as this P1, 
the atom we were talking about would then pick up a P2. Let's say it's oriented in the same direction. We're just interested in its magnitude because, again, the angle, angle effects will average out. But also, there's going to be an alpha zero for both of these, which isn't necessarily the same. So we'll call this alpha zero one and alpha zero two. So with that, we can basically just expand our result from above to have a better estimate of the Debye energy, just a little bit more general, is P1 squared alpha zero one plus P2 squared alpha zero two divided by the same factor And perhaps this is more deserving of the box. So what's lovely about this equation, it has the right units, depends on the magnitudes of the dipoles, and it has the same distance dependence, 1 over r to the 6th, making it the second part of the Van der Waal trio that all have this 1 over r to the 6th dependence. Next time, we'll look at the third and final portion the London dispersion effect.